when one starts to produce fruit, it becomes manifest, manifest in its characteristics which are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control, as we can read in Galatians 5. We talked the other time about uh, the vine dresser, the vine and the branches, and how all works uh, in order for the branches to produce fruit, to glorify the Father. So, this is what I want to speak about now this growing of fruit and yes as i said it it becomes manifest at some point because fruit has characteristics but from the time of the sowing um, this little seed from the time of sowing of this little seed uh, in order to uh, get fruit in the end there is uh, there's a long way there's a long way of growing, cultivation, pruning. Um, it takes time. There's a process. And this is the process of sanctification. And we spoke about this in the past, and uh, you can see this in the, in the diagram here, that, um, that there are certain steps and there is a process. And uh, certainly once the fruit begins to be produced, that it cannot be hidden. You can plant a tree and it may grow for a long time and get branches and leaves, but at some point fruits begin to appear and this catches the, the eye of everyone. Um, now the cultivation, the fertilization, the growth uh, of the spiritual life, because that's what we talk about, uh, this holiness, the, this, this is done in different ways. Uh, it can be through Bible study, prayer, meditation, fasting, uh, obedience, and many more things. And so uh, this this metaphor of a, a plant or a vine growing a f a fruit, uh, or actually going from the seed into becoming a plant and producing fruit, this is a, a good metaphor that we can use. Growing. It's about growing. And I remember from my teenage years that sometimes I felt uh, these strong pains in my body. And um, my parents explained to me that these were growing pains. Um, it's it's the, the, the bones that grow and they pull the muscles and, and uh, it, it hurts. Not everything grows at the same, uh, same speed, so to speak. Yes, growing can hurt. And that's also true for spiritual growth. Paul writes to the Galatians in Galatians 5 verse 17, For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So he, he speaks of this uh, distressing side effect of growing, of the process of sanctification, uh, of, of holiness, growing in holiness and that um, there is uh, this increasing internal conflict. This is the growing pain that, that, uh, that is there. So you become more and more aware of how far you are away from God's perfection. And the reason you become more and more aware of it is that the picture of God becomes more clear to you, but also the picture of self begin, becomes the more, uh, begins to become more clear. Uh, you see yourself as in a mirror, and uh, that's it. it's distressing. It fills you with shame, shame of your dirt, shame of your weak character, um, shame of um, uh, sayings, uh, things that you, you say that you shouldn't, um, and maybe shame of thoughts that are dirty. It's distressing. It's growing pains. And... and, and Paul makes this picture that they are warring with each other. They are two different forces that are pulling. You want to become more holy. You want to to grow, um, uh, to become more sanctified. But at the same time, there are other things pulling you in the other direction. Now, if we weren't growing, then we would never see it. We would never see it. Ask the... Uh, 
an arbitrary person in the street um, who is, is not a Christian uh, ask how they think about themselves and most people actually say I'm a good person they won't don't see it because they're not growing they're not grow um, in the process of sanctification but if we are yes we will experience this and um, actually it fuels the desire to change, to mature. And so, um, the person who is growing in the knowledge of Christ, in other words, the person who is in the process of sanctification, begins to feel distressed. The flesh lusts against the spirit. They are pulling in different directions. And uh, even Paul, uh, at the time when he already was a mature um, Christian, he writes to the Romans in Romans 7, verse 22 through 25, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. As I said, Paul was not a baby Christian when he wrote this. He was mature. and Maybe that's even an understatement. But he too saw inside him this warring. And one side the understanding of the purpose and the perfection of God's law, and on the other side, because of this understanding, he was dismayed because he saw how much he fell short. <clears throat> this struggle is not, the, not a sign that the person is not sanctified. Rather, it's an unavoidable side effect of the process of sanctification. And as long as we are in the flesh, we will never be completely free of this struggle. Human nature does not go down without a fight. And it has to be overcome. Overcoming is here the key word. And that is a long process too. It goes hand in hand with the process of sanctification. And it pleases God when we strive to work, to overcome. And it's also gratifying to us when we have a victory in this field. But what I need to stress, and I said it also last time, um, it does in no way justify us before God. We are saved only by grace through faith. Having said that, that God still requires that we do what we can do on our part. Remember that uh, when we spoke about the tabernacle, all the things the priests had to do in the tabernacle just to be able to serve God the sacrifices, the cleansing, the clothing, the, the tending of the menorah and, and uh, the fire and the incense and all these things. The, this is, were all things that God required from them, although not, nothing of that saved them. Nothing of that saved them. So, knowing this and what we spoke about uh, last time uh, regarding the, the vine and the branches, the fruit is the evidence of our faith and the fruit glorifies the Father but fruit does not come without growing without sanctification and growing does not come without growing pains and they must be overcome now the question is how and the answer is by imitating by imitating there's a great misunderstanding about works. It is always a dangerous field to, when I speak about this. Um, and whenever I do, uh, there are always the predictable comments uh, about works and about grace and uh, once saved, always saved and all these things. It's based on misunderstanding. Some focus only on the works in a legalistic way. While others, they dismiss works completely because they say it's only faith and grace. Saved, sealed and sanctified. And actually both are wrong. Both are wrong. We see that sanctification is a process. Salvation is an 
instantaneous thing, but sanctification is a process. It comes out again in the in the diagram that I, I uh, provide, and which you can download from the website. Uh, it's a very um, helpful and insightful diagram. I think from which you can yeah, you have to really take time to study it and to see what's in there. Um, and I think this can be very helpful. James says, faith without works is dead. And by the way, the other way around is also true. Works without faith is also dead. So many people do works, but they miss, they lack the faith. Um, they lack Jesus in their heart. And um, that's also not good. But faith without works is dead. So, so what are the works and, and what purpose do they serve? And, and we've said it already uh, in, in a way, also last week, but I want to go a bit more into this because it's so relevant, especially now, but actually of all times, but we see that Christianity is so watered down and Christians, most Christians are living very carnal lives and very worldly lives, very much entangled in worldliness and... Um, Actually, m many, I, I hear this also, are knowingly or unknowingly convicted. They feel something's, something's not right with the way they live and uh, what God expects from them. But many cannot put their finger on it. And uh, unfortunately, there's very little teaching on it. The Bible is clear about what works do not achieve. And so I want also to make this clear in Romans uh, 3, verse 28. Paul writes there, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So it's very clear. Justification is by faith. Without the deeds, the works of the law. So works cannot justify us. We are not justified by works, but by faith. There is no doubt and should also be no debate about that. Um, works are not for justification, but they are for sanctification. They do not save us, but the works are essential for the transformation. So what are works then? We can say, we can answer that by saying they are that to be Christ-like, to imitate God. And how do we do that would then be the next question. Well, how do you learn anything? How do you learn how to drive a car? How do you learn how to play a musical instrument? How do you learn a language? You learn by practicing, by practicing. Practice makes perfect. And so there are many verses where we can read that God is actually pleased if we do this practicing. Um, for example, Hebrews 13 verse 16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices God is well pleased. So if we do these practices, if we do these works... Uh, God sees it as a sacrifice. He's pleased by that. They don't save us, but they do please him. And I said this also the last week, actually, not I said it. <laughs> I read it. Jesus said it in John 15. The fruit glorifies the Father. Our works or actions, they, they you can say, they assist um, in the transformation process. We can either um, help to to uh, move this, this transformation process forward or we can obstruct it and make it more painful and, and slower. Um, James uh, writes in James um, uh, chapter 2 verses 22-23 But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abram our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought his work with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abram believed God, and it was imputed 
unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God now if you take uh, a part out of this you might miss uh, miss understand it because you might think that he was actually justified by works yeah, was not abram our father justified by works but if you continue to read you see that it was by faith and the works made the faith perfect they are the evidence of the faith this is what it's about um and so um this faith not the works, the faith was imputed unto him for righteousness. And I will get back to that in another message, uh, Lord willing, uh, shortly. Think of it this way, as parents, you are pleased to see your child making efforts to learn something, maybe to walk, and you see that he is falling more often than, than stepping, but he's trying or when he tries to, to write his first letters and he makes so many mistakes but you see these efforts and it pleases you you see how the child is trying to um, to learn something and slowly is is also learning of course but there's much failure much failure and in spite of the failure as a parent you're pleased you're you're happy you're proud likewise god is looking at his children children that are trying to imitate him just as our children are trying to imitate us which is by the way something uh, we often forget uh, they imitate us also in the bad things of course um, so even Paul reflects this when he writes to the Philippians and he, he says uh, I, I do not desire a gift um, but I desire fruit I want to see evidence evidence yeah? imitate me in imitating Christ and show the evidence of it so if works are for sanctification then the next question might be why is sanctification so important okay one thing we have said last week we said it also now it pleases God and it also glorifies God so so that's that could be enough um, but there is even more to it it is actually vital, sanctification is vital, in order to testify our faith in Jesus before the Father. Again, fruit is the evidence, it's our testimony. So let's look at a number of verses to understand what this actually means. First, uh, I want to read from John 5, verses 28 and 29. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. It speaks here about the resurrection, and it speaks about judgment. Judgment unto life or unto damnation. But pay attention to the qualification. It says, they that have done good versus they that have done evil. It appears that what they have done, their actions, their behavior, their works, if you will, do matter. They do matter. And this is actually confirmed in Revelation 20, where we read about the fulfillment of this judgment. Um, and, uh, verses 12 and 13. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the dead and, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to what? To their works. In other words, we must give account to what we have done in the flesh. This namely is the evidence of our faith. In Romans 14, um, verse 10 through 12, Paul writes, For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So 
then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Now many want to make us believe that it's not important to make the right choices, that it's not important to keep God's commandments, that it's not important to do works. And that is false. Yes, work is not required to save us, but it is to ensure that we have changed. Again, and, uh, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10, For we must all appear for the judgment seat of Christ, the same he writes to the Romans, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So again, it speaks about what you have done, about your actions, about your works. Uh, you see the context in which I use the word works. It's maybe different from what many others mean by it, but this is what I mean to say, what we just read. Um, <clears throat> salvation is not the end, it is the beginning of transformation. This comes out very clear in this diagram. <clears throat> you see after repentance uh, and justification, and there is the salvation, and then begins this process of transformation. Um, it, so it's really a beginning, not the end um, that we see there. Yeah. Maybe we can put it in a legal framework, um, because this is also what Paul does when he speaks about appearing before the judgment seat. Eh? That's like the court uh, where you appear. Um, when we appear before the judgment seat, God wants to see evidence. Evidence, which means testimony, that's the fruit, the evidence, in order to prove our case before him that we are indeed his children. So he wants to see evidence to prove. There's two different things, evidence and proof is not the same. So evidence is the testimony and proof is the test, you can say. The, the, the testimony provides, the evidence provides all that that is necessary to prove the case. So, saying all this, it's, God is also very merciful and graceful. Um, it's not about quantity of works, deeds, not even about the quality. He's very merciful. In 1 Corinthians 3, Paul makes clear that um, even when all our works are burned up, we ourselves are still saved. Let's read that. <clears throat> it's encouraging. For other foundation can no man lay than uh, that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And if any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So we see that uh, this, um, this work is now compared to building upon the foundation Jesus Christ. That makes, that en uh, ensures that you are saved. But the building can be gold, silver, and it goes then all the way down to, to hay and stubble. Fire will test it. Gold will not burn up in the fire, but hay and stubble and wood will. Nothing will be left, and you see also these two outcomes, reward or suffering loss. But the person is still saved. So what counts is the foundation, Jesus. That brings salvation. And even though the works are of poor quality, it pleases God to see that we want to belong to him, that we try. Uh, and we don't try just to prove our point. We we, this is also what I said the other time, the objective is not to produce fruit. The objective is to abide in him. 
we love him and therefore we keep his commandments not the other way around so this is so easily done to turn it around but this is this is the wrong thing if we focus on doing works on producing fruit we focus on the wrong thing we should focus on jesus we should abide in, in him and uh, the result will be that we produce fruit that will be the evidence of it so again works are required uh, not for salvation, but for sanctification. The works, the things that we do, again, they are the result of, of our abiding in Him, of allowing Jesus to work through us, but they help the transformation. And they help in getting to know Jesus deeper. They help in producing fruit, in producing change. If a person does not make the efforts to change, then think of it, the per that person would be very unhappy in the kingdom of God because everyone there will be holy and then this person will not be holy. He will not fit in there. It just doesn't go. Now, of course, Satan um, feeds the people false doctrines of um, an abolished law and of grace and a new covenant that covers everything. And so he stops the process of sanctification and you get these carnal Christians that are easily uh, drawn completely uh, in the wrong direction. But Jesus told us that he did not come to abolish the law or the prophets. And in Hebrews 12 it's written that without holiness, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Holiness is really the polar opposite of worldliness. So without holiness, no one can see the Lord. We need to strive for holiness. We need to work on it. We need to, to strive for sanctification. So then... In conclusion, what is our answer to the gift of salvation? To do just nothing? Or to work with God in order to grow in Him? He gives us everything we need to grow. We saw this the, the other time when we spoke about the vine and the branches. He does everything, even when we are down on the ground, in the dirt, ready to, to die. He lifts us up, He, he makes us clean again, and um, He... Gives us everything we need in order to grow and to produce fruit. Do we work with him to, to advance this? Or do we put our feet in the sand and obstruct to our detriment? Uh, do we work in order to get to know him better? To produce fruit? To please him? To glorify him? And so that we also uh, may be sanctified? Or do we just do nothing? This is the big question. This is what it's about. Sanctification is a process that we should be in every moment of every day of our lives. Uh, it pleases God. It is to our own benefit. And it glorifies God. And it's also an example to others. It is what makes us different from the world. It is what makes us salt and light. And that is what we should be. Amen.